Infrastructure is a critical agenda here at the World Economic Forum in Davos and the rollout of infrastructure across the African continent is obviously very, very important given that we have an infrastructure funding gap in the billions of dollars of rands. So with me now is Samaila Zaibaru. He is the president and chief executive of the Africa Finance Corporation. Sumala, infrastructure green. I mean, this is at the heart of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. What has been outstanding for you in terms of the discussions in your sweet spot? Um, okay, thank you, Bronwyn, for having me here. And thanks for the opportunity. Uh, this is a very important gathering. Um, Davos this year is slightly different because there's a lot of crisis that we're all trying to grapple with. But yet there are several solutions um, that we need to address, especially when you look at the energy transition. You know, you look at um, Africa's place in the energy transition. Um, there's a continued realization of the need to look at a just transition and the role that Africa plays and other developing economies play. So here at WEF, we've had several conversations around mobilizing um, energy, sorry, mobilizing investments for clean energy uh, in, in Africa. Uh, we've also had several conversations around how to um, look at aid, um, repurpose aid, instead to focus on mobilizing investments. Uh, we're also looking at what are the big ideas around mobilizing more capital. So for example, there are several barriers that we know. Um, around currency risk in Africa. We know uh, about the cost of capital. It's all very high. Um, and we have those conversations. Then also, interestingly, there are conversations around the African continental free trade area and how important it is you know, to get that going, how important it is for the world to have a single point of entry to the continent, continuing over 55 countries, um, all with very different regulations. And when you're looking at initiatives that was launched recently, um, um, a lot of them, you know, people are, want a, s a single point of entry, so to speak. So with the Continental Free Trade Area, that will provide that. And then we have organizations like the Africa CDC, the African American Alliance, that are also trying to see how we can make things easy. I want to pause, I want to pause, and, and I, I know you're going to a very important point, so we're going to come back to that, but I want to pause on the African continental free trade area and the opportunity you think that we realistically, realistically can unlock from AFCFTA. So, I mean, without a doubt, it's going to be the largest single market, and um, Africa has the youngest population, so the youngest workforce in the world is going to be in Africa. So there has to be a focus on how to get more value. We have the lowest regional trade in the world and the lowest I think about 18% compared to about 70% in Europe, North America, 6% in Asia. So clearly there's a need for that. And uh, we've had I think 44 countries sign up to, to that right now. Uh, so a lot of progress is made. There are several challenges but still there's progress. So one of the big challenges that we have to overcome and it's important that we highlight it is movement of people. You know, it's not possible for us, you know, to continue to have a situation where it is easier for Europeans and, Afri and Americans to travel within Africa and it's so difficult for Africans to travel within Africa. So that's one of the key things that needs to be unlocked. And I know that there are initiatives along that path. But more importantly, you know, we have to look at our economies, you know, and see how we move from primary producers, you know, um, to more value additive producers and that is important because most of the things that we try to solve for like uh, exchange rates like high borrowing cost like risk it's all because the economies have not transformed so if we focus on how we can um, move from just producing raw materials um, to value added products uh, and then we see a big difference um, anytime we have you know um, volatility in commodity prices you know we we, we, we suffer and we need to learn from our experience you know, and change that if you consider the fact that Africa is home to most of the resources, especially the ones that will be required for the energy transition, then you know that we have to do differently. Are we doing it differently? Are, are we doing it differently? Are you seeing beneficiation happen? Are you seeing us manufacturing? Is that starting to take traction? Yes, we, are, we have several initiatives. At the Africa Finance Corporation, we're embarked on about three such initiatives. And I'll give you one example. You know, uh, we're focusing right now on how to 
convert cotton to t-shirts you know uh, and we're doing that in one of our industrial zones you know uh, and again because of the work we do we actually have one of the uh, carbon free industrial zones on the continent you know I think one of the first carbon free industrial zones in the world really so it is very important that we continue to look at the intersection of climate and development and because in Africa we have a long way to go there's opportunity for us to do different we have significant hydro resources, wind and solar resources um, on the continent. But if we are considering climate and the fact that we are all trying to reduce global emissions going forward, then it makes sense for a lot of the fabrication for these companies to take place in Africa. You know, so for example, the continental free trade I referred to will require over 2 million trucks. It can't be that we use diesel trucks. We have to use electric trucks. And because we have most of the components for um, electric cars on the continent, there has to be a case for us to build you know, um, these cars on the continent. And then if you look at Africa's unique equidistance to the rest of the world, it clearly makes more sense for secular economies to be built on the continent you know, because it's easier to go to Europe, America and Asia from Africa as opposed to the current model now where everything goes to Asia and to the rest of the world. So we think it's very important that um, as we think of um, net zero, we think of real changes to the supply chain uh, architecture where we are looking at more value creation on the continent and we have examples where we invested in a mine, a manganese mine in Gabon and what happens now is that most of the shipment goes to China and then from China um, that's about 3,000 miles then a further 400 miles to a processing plant and what happens mainly there is just um, heating and crushing most of which can happen in Africa with renewable energy because next to the mine is a hydro dam uh, and we've secured a power purchase agreement you know, at competitive rates so we're installing a smelter you know, um, to process the manganese in Gabon. Uh, this um, initiative will reduce the shipment significantly and we will find buyers not just in China now, because from China they also ship to the rest of the world. So we're able to ship from China to various parts of the world. We're able to reduce the shipments from about 30 to 40 a year to just six, you know, because of, of, of the processing that takes place. You know that shipping is one of the largest emitters. And if we're all focused on achieving net zero, then we also have to look at the supply chain. In the same way we're looking at how to build new energy infrastructure using renewables. We also have to look at how to um, create jobs you know, uh, in Africa. And this is very important because it solves several problems. You know, creating jobs in Africa through secular economies you know, um, that will provide input for what is quite in the rest of the world. Creates jobs in Africa, it reduces immigration, challenges for Europe and America and Asia, you know, and um, it also reduces emissions. So it's a win-win for the whole world. A win-win for the whole world. Samayla, there's been a, a lot of news flow out of Africa Finance Corporation around Asia, capital coming from Asia, further I see Africa Finance Corporation expanding footprint into the East. Can you elaborate on that strategy? So we've always um, accessed capital from the rest of the world, from everywhere in the world. So we have a very good relationship in Asia. We have um, banks, you know, um, like SMBC, Mizuhu, um, that help arrange funding for us, including the Standard Chartered. Um, so we have good relationship with banks and they open doors for us. We have raised recently um, a lot of money from the Korean Development Bank. We've done a kimchi offering. We have uh, renewed our facility, uh, our samurai facility in Japan. Um, we have actually signed an agreement with uh, Mizuhu on how to catalyze investments into Africa. Um, so we've done a, a samurai, I think about over $300 million. Um, we've also done a transaction with the Korean Development Bank. We've done a kimchi. Uh, we have money from China Exim. We're trying to renew that. In the same way, we have money from U.S. Development Finance Corporation. Uh, we have money from DEG, we have money from AFD, we have money from uh, Propaco, uh, and several of the... So there's really no, there's no concentration. Yes. It, it really is from... Yes. Uh, and we also have relationship banks as well that we work with for our medium-term funding. Uh, and also we issue euro bonds as well, um, which is global. And we have a lot of the investors from both 
Asia, America and Europe, and even Africa and the Middle East. So we have a diversified funding base and we continue to, to grow that um, because the needs are, are huge. You know, we have demonstrated that we can do it very well. For the last 15 years, we have been profitable. We have continued to grow. Our balance sheet is over $10 billion now. You know, so we are a significant player and we have capacity to do more. Uh, our appeal is for partners that are thinking seriously about doing business in Africa to not try to reinvent the wheel. You know, look at parties like us and several others and see how we can enhance our capacity collectively. A final question, is this African century? It should be. Uh, and we have to make it one, actually. And the reason why we have to make it one is we first have to take ownership of our development. You know, we must lead the charge for our development and then the world will follow. So if we're waiting for people to come and help us, it's not going to happen. You know, no matter the intentions, they can only see it from their own prism. We understand that our economies need to structurally transform. We understand that we need to move from exporting raw materials to finished goods. So we have to take those initiatives ourselves and the world will follow, especially because if you look at the example I gave on electric mobility, you know, right now there are about 8 million cars, but we need over 100 million. So it can't be that we would increase that amount of mining with also amount of shipping, you know, and under the same supply chain architecture. We have to do it differently. You know, as African, especially African leaders, we have to agree that we must limit export of raw materials. We have the market, you know, it's over 1.2 billion people, growing to over 2 billion people, the youngest workforce. You know, we have to find ways to accelerate infrastructure development with uh, technology and digital. You know, um, so all of these are significant opportunities. And it will make us the century, the, the, this century, the African century. Of course, I know the Asians are arguing that it's their century, but there's nothing wrong in sharing the century with, uh, with Africa. And we are focused on ensuring that we do our bit to realize our potential. Exactly. I mean, the theme here is about collaboration in a fragmented world. Asia can share the century with Africa. I've been chatting to Samila Zabaru, who is the chief executive and president of the Africa Finance Corporation. And you've heard it from the man himself. We need to find African solutions to African problems. Bronwyn Nielsen reporting for Biz News, the Nielsen Network and Brand South Africa here at the World Economic Forum, Davos 2023. Thank you.